name is John Hunnett, partner in charge of Eisner Ampers Technology and Life Sciences Practice. I'm excited to welcome you to the 2020 PACT Capital Conference featured company presentations for our healthcare track. Eisner Amper is proud to support this conference and we'd like to thank all of our sponsors. This couldn't happen without them, so please check out their information on the conference website. As we get started, I'd like to thank the industry track vice chairs, Healthcare Kapila Ratnam, partner at New Spring Capital, Glenn Bresner, co-founder and managing partner of Activate Venture Partners, and Doc, Par Doc Pargy, managing partner of SRI Capital. And now I'd like to introduce Dean Miller, the president and CEO of PAC, to get us started. Thank you. It is now time to get day one started of our featured company presentations and our road to the lion's den on September 24th. New this year, we're giving all of you the opportunity to rate our featured companies. This will help our Lions determine who will be the final three on September 24th. To access the ratings, open the PACT Capital Conference app on your mobile device or desktop. Again, you can use your mobile phone to scan the QR code that's on the screen for quick access. Once you've logged in, the access code to join is CAPCON 2020. Again, CAPCON 2020. In the Featured Companies tab, select the company you'd like to rate and rate it from one to five stars with five as the best. You can rate as many companies as you like. We will close the rating function the week of September 14th. Again, help us guide the Lions in choosing the final three companies for the Lions Den of the PACT Capital Conference on September 24th. Thank you. Here to kick us off is our healthcare featured company sponsor, partner at EY and PAC board member, Dave Berkavich. Welcome, Dave. Good morning. My name is Dave Berkavich and I'm a partner at EY and I lead our growth markets practice here in the Philadelphia region. We have a long history of helping growth companies and we're so excited to be associated with the healthcare track and sponsoring this track today. I'd now I'd like to introduce you to the companies in the orders of their presentations. Our first presentation this morning is Algamet RX. I'm Julia Finkel. I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist and pain medicine researcher. I study analgesic pharmacology, and the impasse to doing that well is being able to measure the endpoint, which is pain. I've spent the last 10 years developing devices and methodologies to do just that, and what we're presenting today is the culmination of those efforts. In 2015, I spun Algometrics out of Children's National to commercialize the technology. The technology itself is a novel integration of infrared pupillometry and neuroselective electrical stimulation. The end user is anyone having to measure pain, though we have focused applications in rheumatology, pain, oncology, neurology, and primary care. Our financing to date includes 2.4 million in a seed round and 410K in non-dilutive monies uh, via the NIH and FDA. Our current need is for three to five million uh, to enable the beta device development and clinical trials in support of our initial FDA clearance. The problem we're addressing is the standard of care and pain measurement. The scales are subjective and dependent on patient and self-report. They are mechanism agnostic and they are a recognized driver of the opioid epidemic. Our solution is the algometrics nociometer. It provides an objective measure of pain, both its type as well as intensity. It allows for the evaluation of analgesics and can monitor the pain state as well as the uh, pain in medicine over time. Uh, the, we are leveraging a new insight into physiology, which includes the fact that a non-painful neuroselective electrical stimulus will activate differentially each of the three sensory nerve fiber types. So this barely perceptible stimulus will activate a nerve that then goes up the pain pathways in the spine and onto the brain and to the hypothalamus and then onto the ciliospinal center where it affects a pupillary dilation. We measure the magnitude of that pupillary dilation and that allows us to understand the differential sensitivity of each of those fiber types which then indicates what kind of pain there is. And so on the left, you have post-operative pain where the pain fibers are activated. In sickle cell disease, a model of chronic pain, you see a different paradigm. And then there's large fiber neuropathy on the right where that uh, touch fiber is actually act activated. 
we are also able to measure the impact of pain medicines on the pain state. And so on the right here is an example of a non-steroidal being used in a post-operative patient where you see a significant reduction before and after the dose. Uh, it also correlates with the self-report in this instance. Our initial applications include those in rheumatology, fibromyalgia, lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis specifically, oncology, and as a clinical trial endpoint. We've had a number of significant milestones. Uh, most notable, we've been selected as a winner of the FDA Innovation Challenge, uh, which gives us a potential accelerated pathway and breakthrough status designation. Uh, we've already had a meeting, uh, a few sub meeting with the FDA indicating that this would be a 510K the de novo pathway for us. In terms of our competition, there really isn't anything that in a handheld mobile device uh, is able to detect pain, determine its type, measure the analgesic impact, and uh, look at neuropathies. We have uh, five patents, uh, three of which have already issued. Uh, the addressable pain market is colossal. That's over $635 billion. If we were to look at only a small piece of that, 20% of the population with chronic pain, that represents $127 billion. And if we consider that uh, the cost of misdiagnosis is on the order of $50 billion, if we were to correct that by only 20%, that's a $200 million, million market. Uh, we are, if we get the funding we need, we are on target to uh, achieve our anticipated first FDA approval in FY23. Our use of funds uh, would then be all directed to uh, the clinical trial supporting that application and any team additions and working capital. The Aldometrics team is composed of uh, clinician scientists, uh, business and engineering expertise, as well as reimbursement and, and uh, regulatory expertise. We have a number of ongoing research collaborations. Keraton Inc. Keraton. Before I jump into the Keraton overview, a little bit about myself. I graduated way back in the year we will not mention today as a computer engineer. After working in enterprise tech for 10 years at Accenture, I got my first taste of the startup world at a pharma services company. This company was 10 people and less than a million dollars in ARR. I was hooked. I ended up staying 13 years facilitating organic and acquisitive growth, ultimately becoming the GM responsible for the $50 million PNL. After my exit, I knew I wanted to replicate this experience and immerse myself in the Philly startup ecosystem. Eventually finding Keratin, and falling for the premise and future upside of SaaS and digital health. Now, let me share the Keratin story. At Keratin, we've assembled the core leadership team necessary to, to achieve success. We have a CTO with enterprise and startup experience for our tech stack, a clinical director who has the domain expertise of the pediatric ICU. We also have a key resource to be added as part of this round of financing as a seasoned sales leader. Keratin is backed by many investors in attendance today and well-known in the Philly, Philly digital health arena. As I begin, let me hit some of the highlights of Keratin's investment opportunity. The opportunity is real as the current environment in the pediatric ICU is antiquated, inefficient workflows, and a propensity of errors. This leads to poor patient outcomes. The market size for Keratin is $2.25 billion. This has recently increased due to a product strategy expansion. More on this later. Our revenue model is a traditional annual licensed SaaS model, thus enabling minimal deployment effort and comparable SaaS margins. Keratin is the only technology patented in this space as of March of this year. Our results have shown increased revenue year over year, and we have collected the data to validate our value proposition. We have raised $2.5 million to date in two rounds and are currently raising a $3 million equity round. As many of you are familiar with the Keratin origin story, I will be brief. Keratin was born at a University of Pennsylvania hackathon, PennAx, in the spring of 2016. The Hospital of UPenn NICU nurses posed our problem statement, an inefficient, error-prone feeding management system with no data insights. Since Keratin won this hackathon, 
The platform was initially co-developed with Penn Medicine and extensively built out thereafter. Today, Keridan includes the following components. We are a SaaS mobile and desktop solution utilized in the NICU and PICU inpatient setting. One app is for the moms to use, as well as four apps for the specific provider roles supporting the ICUs. The platform is integrated with the hospital EMR to facilitate bi-directional real-time updates of the patient record. As the platform has been deployed for three years, we have collected the data demonstrating our value proposition. We have reduced expirations of feeds, mom's milk, donor milk, and formula up to 50% in the unit, thus reducing wastage in the unit. We have shown increases in breast milk production by moms upwards of 40%. This translates to 83 additional milliliters of milk per day per mom, enabling patients to thrive and go home sooner. Most importantly, we have prevented over 750 errors across all institutions, increasing safety and preventing countless adverse events in the unit. Now to talk a little bit about the future of Keridan. As mentioned, the platform currently focuses on inpatient care in the NICU and PICU, as well as family engagement. Moving forward, as a result of customer feedback and introspection during the pandemic, we will expand the platform into outpatient care, the newborn nursery, and ultimately consumer applications. A few of the components will include outpatient telemedicine and remote monitoring, now a standard part of healthcare in today's world. These capabilities will leverage the current platform, thus we don't have to reinvent the wheel. The expansion of Keridan's product strategy significantly increases our addressable market. Originally, Keridan estimated our addressable market at $500 million in the U.S. for inpatient pediatric ICU services. Now with the addition of the newborn nursery, outpatient care, consumer markets, the total addressable market is fourfold over $2 billion. We will also expand internationally once we achieve critical mass in the U.S. as we have received interest from multiple European and Asian countries. The product development timeframe to support this expansion is listed on the left side over the course of two years. As alluded to earlier, this round of financing will primarily be used twofold, sales and marketing expansion and building out the engineering team to build that product expansion just mentioned. In addition, research studies will be conducted to validate and publish regarding the platform hypotheses. Finally, I would like to close with Keridan's historic and forecast financial. The key takeaway from this slide is that our financial goals are realistic and achievable, taking into account the challenges of selling into healthcare due to the robust nature of our pipeline and the maturity of our current conversation. The current raise objective is to achieve $6.3 million in ARR by 2022 and achieve profitability by the second quarter of this year. I thank you for listening to Keridan's story, and I'm happy to provide additional information by reaching out to Rich at Keridan. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Lin Shang. Hi, I'm Rick Hewen, CEO of Lin Shang. I've spent an entire career in the medical device business. Half of that with giants like Abbott, Johnson & Johnson, and BD. The other half in startups. We started Learnware, built it to about $10 million, and sold it to a private equity firm. We then, with a license from the Navy, started CSA Medical, built that to about $20 million, and sold that to Steris in 2019. I have a science degree and an MBA from Penn State University, Go Lions, my wife and I live in Annapolis, Maryland, where we raised our two now post-college age kids. When I'm not working, I'm typically in a pool, on a bike, or out for a run, training for an upcoming triathlon. Obsessively competitive, whether at work or at play, this is the view my competition gets. Linshom provides critical continuous respiratory monitoring for patients with or at risk of respiratory compromise. Lynchum is solving an acute, widespread healthcare problem and is entering a market in excess of $1 billion with a high-margin, single-use medical device. Our device is FDA-cleared with validating data from the Cleveland Clinic and Brigham and Women's Hospital. Patents have been issued worldwide, further de-risking an investment. 
Unlike the OR or ICU, general care floors lack respiratory monitoring. Standard of care is nursing rounds where the compliance at patient assessment is quite low. Unfortunately, nursing rounds miss 90% of adverse event warnings. Standard of care here is simply built to fail. Half of all adverse medical events occur on the general care floor, and 60% of these patients are symptomatic hours prior to a rescue event. 75% of all rescue events are respiratory in nature. Lynchum solves this problem with a continuous respiratory monitoring solution that provides respiratory rate, tidal volume, minute ventilation, and apnea detection in real time. The non-invasive Lynchome sensor is simple, reliable, portable, and inexpensive. It can be incorporated into an oxygen mask, a nasal cannula, and other form factors. We know that continuous respiratory monitoring works. A Dartmouth study found a 65% reduction in rapid response activation and a 48% reduction in costly ICU transfers for patients by implementing continuous respiratory monitoring. Savings were substantial in a small, 33-bed orthopedic unit. Critically, Lynchum provides tidal volume, which current technology outside of the OR and ICU cannot provide. Tidal volume, or the amount of air your lungs move, is a vital parameter of respiration. Our technology and patents are based on a thermal sensor that is tightly controlled by a thermoelectric cooler and a proprietary control loop algorithm. This accurately detects the respiratory signal during each inhale and exhale cycle of respiration. Published data from the Cleveland Clinic shows superior respiratory detection versus capnography, the gold standard for measuring respiratory rate. The author, Dr. Vargo, concludes that, in a state of hypoventilation, Lynchome is superior to capnography. Similarly, published data from Brigham and Women's Hospital shows strong correlation with capnography. The author, Dr. Price, concludes that Lynchome offers a minimally intrusive opportunity to detect respiratory rate and apnea without expensive or complex anesthetic equipment before the need for life-saving resuscitation arises. Lynchum has worldwide patent protection and is entering a $10 billion worldwide market. Specifically, Lynchome targets the market opportunity in the emergency room and post-surgical settings, which is over $6 billion. Lynchum will start with the highest unmet need, the 25 million patients currently receiving supplemental oxygen. This presents an immediate served market just in the United States of $5 to $700 million. Lynchum is the only device capable of practically delivering a full respiratory profile, including tidal volume and minute ventilation to the patient bedside. A deeply experienced management team and expert advisory board have been assembled to carry this device to market and exit. A detailed business plan ensures that we hit our milestones on a daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis. We have completed a $1.5 million convertible note and are now raising a $3 million Series A round. We will use those funds to conduct a small clinical use study and then commercially launch the product. We invite you to join us on this mission to implement continuous respiratory monitoring as standard of care. Let's reduce patient morbidity, save patient lives, and in the process, reduce healthcare system costs. Neura Health. Hi, my name is Sanjay Kobragade, and I'm the founder and CEO of Neura Health. Very happy to be here at uh, presenting at the PACT event. A um, little bit about myself. Uh, I was born and brought up in India. I uh, came to do my master's uh, in 2001. Um, master's in chemical engineering from Villanova University. Since then, I have been living uh, in and around Philadelphia suburbs. Um, I'm married, I have two young kids, eight-year-old girl and four-year-old boy. Um, during lockdown restrictions, we have been spending time in backyard doing water plays uh, or uh, just biking around the town um, or running after butterflies in meadows. Uh, personally, I have been spending time uh, to learn how to um, play piano. Um, I also like flying. Um, I have a pilot's license. Uh, again, very happy to be uh, presenting at the PACT event. Thank you. I'm Sanjay Khabragade, founder and CEO of Neura Health, making medical imaging accessible to world population. Medical imaging continues to remain accessible to a privileged few across the world who can afford it. For a vast majority of world population, medical imaging remains a luxury. One of the reasons is that analysis of medical imaging continues to be done manually by radiologists without much of the automation. Also, because of the imaging volume and demands of the job, 
there's burnout among radiologists, and it's going to continue to get worse in future. NeuraHealth is engineering solutions to automate medical imaging analysis using AI and make medical imaging accessible as well as affordable for world population. This will help radiologists increase their productivity and reduce time and cost for the patients. We want to accomplish this goal using exhaustive use of technology, the likes of cloud computing, AI, 5G, and quantum computing. Currently, we have two products built, NeuraDetect for breast cancer detection in mammography images, and NeuraCOVID for COVID-19 detection in chest X-rays and CT scans. We have started FDA 510K approval process for NeuraCOVID. Medical Device Academy is acting as our consultant. We are also working on building third product called NeuraChex to screen for lung diseases. All of these products are built in cloud and are accessible from anywhere there is internet connection. The analysis of medical images by AI does not remove clinicians and radiologists from the clinical workflow, but just makes it easy by prioritizing work lists for them and handling routine repeat work so that they can focus on treating critical patients faster and treat them earlier. Here's a result from NeuraDetect. It provides classification of breast density, screening by rad score, and breast cancer classification across benign and malignant classes. It also provides images for the radiologist to closely view on the AI decision. Results from NeuraCOVID provide information on likelihood for, of the COVID-19 and classifies across normal non-COVID pneumonia and COVID-19 categories. There's also heat map overlay provided on top of original chest X-ray image. The global market size for medical imaging analysis using AI software is trending on higher side and is set to increase to $1.5 billion by 2023. NeuraHealth wants to be part of this story and is targeting to capture 2.5% of the market size or about $37 million. The competition is fierce in this market for AI radiology solutions for breast cancer, chest X-rays, and CD analysis. However, we differentiate in the way that NeuraHealth solutions are developed and operate in cloud, which makes it easy for adoption for the hospital. And the accuracy of the AI algorithms is relatively high as well. Currently, the team consists of six people. Our medical advisor is a fellowship-trained breast imaging diagnostic radiologist who is guiding us navigate medical side of things. So far, we are operating in bootstrap mode. I'm using my personal savings to build Neura Health. We are looking for 250,000 in seed funding to expand the IT team, marketing and sales, and also get FDA approval for our, our other products. Neura Health was started in 2019 and has grown aggressively in last year. We started with our first hire in October 2019, and we had a product build by March 2020. In another month to counter the COVID-19, we came up with Neura COVID product. It's being tested in a couple of hospitals in India, and we are looking to get the product FDA approved by December of 2020. Neura Health, making medical imaging accessible to world population. If you want to be part of our journey, please talk to us at the launch table or reach us by email or phone. Thank you. Patient wing. Hey everyone, calling in from my Philly apartment. My name is Stephen Morley. Thank you for joining me today. It means so much. I'm so excited to talk to you about patient wing. But before I get there, I'd love to share a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Southern California. But sadly, I do not know how to surf. Not all of California is a beach. I know that is shocking to most people. But for undergrad, I went to UC Berkeley, two degrees, economics and in rhetoric, aka fancy philosophy. And today I'm in the proud city of brotherly love here in Philly. I've been here for over a little over a year, I would say. And what's one thing I love about the city? Um, I love the food. The food is so good. I love food. It is so good. It's my number one passion. So I'm really happy. I love making food, eating food, going out for food, everything about it. But enough about me, enough about food. Let's get on to my second favorite passion, patient wing. So again, my name is Stephen Worley. I'm the director of marketing at Patient Wing, and our mission is to connect patients with clinical trials to advance science and save lives. But there's a problem. With over 55,000 active clinical trials running in the U.S. alone, 
patient recruitment and enrollment remains the number one problem our industry faces. And historically, pharma hasn't stepped up to solve this problem. Why is that? Well, with chronic diseases, there are millions of patients all over the world. Take asthma, for example. I'm sure all of you watching know someone who has asthma, or maybe it's even yourself. With so many people having common conditions like this, we haven't needed to put in the extra effort to engage with patients. Because if one person is no longer interested in a study, there are so many more who can take their spot. But with nearly two thirds of trials today focused on rare diseases and oncology, we must engage with patients. Why? Well, only one in 2,000 people have a rare disease, and they too are dispersed globally. So pharma needs to act. They need to engage and enroll patients. But pharma also lacks the tools necessary to do just that. And that's why we built PatientRing, a platform that empowers pharmaceutical companies, otherwise known as sponsors, to engage and communicate with their patients directly. And most importantly, enable sponsors to enroll patients in their trials efficiently and on time. And here's how we do it. We start by finding patients. Simple, right? <laughs> it doesn't stop there. We built a multi-step approach with the patient journey in mind at every step. Each one of these stops along the roadmap indicates a personalized touch point with the patients. Where a customized pre-screener lets patients know within five minutes if they pre-qualify for the study. Where a dedicated person on our team calls them to further screen them. Where a warm handoff to the research site means patients have the chance to ask any and every question they have before ultimately enrolling in the study. But what makes us different? Why should sponsors choose patient wing? Well, there's a few reasons. I already talked about how we empower sponsors, and we just walked through our, how our process is optimized for the patient journey. We also have a proven track record of success. On average, we've accelerated patient recruitment by 33%. And in a difficult to recruit study involving brain surgery, we enrolled 100% of their patients over two years. But our success really starts at the foundation by offering rapid rollouts and launching a study in our services in as little as two weeks. This is critical because oftentimes sponsors are in a pinch, need to enroll patients like today, and are left waiting up to one year for a vendor to launch their services, not us. This is because we invested heavily into R&D upfront which means our solution today is pre-built, cost-efficient, and ultimately scalable. Speaking of scalability, we have already seen significant early impact. Since launching in 2018, we've helped 24 trials recruit and enroll patients, which means we've made long-term strategic relationships with 13 amazing clients. And our studies and recruitment services span across five continents around the world. Well, that's great, Stephen, but how did you achieve such a great impact? What's your business model? Well, thanks for asking. So this is our pricing model. A little bit of services and a whole lot of SaaS. In reality, our SaaS plus services model is customizable and contracts fluctuate based on the specific need of our clients. But our average sale price is currently 500,000 for an 18 month period with nearly 70% gross margins. And finishing off Q2 of this year, 2020, we're proud to say that we've seen tremendous growth. That's 913% year-over-year growth to be exact since launching in 2018. We have amazing sales. And with $4 million booked to date and $2.7 million booked from 2020 alone, we've been able to grow significantly, all while maintaining profitability for the last four quarters. We are uniquely qualified and in a favorable position for success because of our laser focus. We are the leading firm for rare diseases and oncology recruitment. Why is that? Because our highly targeted go-to-market strategy, we doubled down on a segment of the market and became experts at our trade. But there's a long ways to go. And with a huge market cap and only 4 million to date, there's huge opportunities for further growth. And we have the passionate, driven, and successful leadership team to do it. Our CEO, Zikria Syed, has been in the healthcare and pharma industry for over 15 years. And our founders among them have successfully launched five companies, exited four, and now with all of us are growing patiently one clinical trial at a time. So like I said, sponsors need the tools to engage directly with patients and enroll them in their studies. And Patient Wing is here to do just that. So again, my name is Stephen Worley. I uh, thank you so much for listening, coming out today. If you wanna learn more, I'm gonna be in the networking session, please. I'm happy to talk, answer any of your questions, 
or email or call me. This is all, this is my direct contact line. I'm more than available. And like I said, if it isn't food, my passion is patient wing. So bye now. Quantitative radiology solutions. Hi, I'm Joe Camerata, president and CEO of Quantitative Radiology Solutions. I'm a Philadelphia native, born and raised in the Northeast. I did my undergraduate studies at Drexel University, where I got a degree in computer science long before there was a major known as computer science. Uh, besides managing QRS, I'm a huge baseball fan. I live and die with the Philadelphia Phillies, mostly dying the past couple of years though. Um, I currently live in Bucks County and am active in a number of historical preservation activities. On weekends, you can find me at Washington's Crossing where I'm giving tours to visitors around the activities that happened there during the American Revolution. Thank you for the opportunity to present at PACT. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Hi, I'm Joe Camerata, President and CEO of Quantitative Radiology Solutions. Quantitative radiology solutions helps physicians make better treatment decisions through automated analysis of medical images. We offer advanced analysis of images for applications in radiology, radiation oncology, and medical oncology. QRS is commercializing a technology that aims to reduce the side effects of unnecessary radiation exposure for cancer patients undergoing radiation therapy. I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about that opportunity. Together with surgery and chemotherapy, radiation therapy is an indispensable tool in the management of patients with cancer. However, studies have shown that up to 30% of patients receiving radiation treatment suffer from side effects resulting in an emergency room visit or an inpatient admission. Unfortunately, up to 50% of those side effects are caused by suboptimal treatment planning. To protect healthy tissues from irradiation, a radiation oncologist or dosimetrist painstakingly outlines sensitive structures on a CT imaging using a computer mouse. The process of outlining 10 or more structures over 100 images can take to one or two hours per plan. Our software enables physicians to increase the accuracy of planning while reducing the time necessary to, to complete a plan. Treatment planning has an established CPT code with an average reimbursement of almost $2,000 per plan. CMS allows for two plans per episode of treatment, and, but sites frequently only produce a single plan due to personnel resource constraints. Productivity improvement resulting from our solution can be converted into increased patient revenue by enabling additional plans during the course of treatment. Also, it enables an oncologist to replan during the course of treatment to account for anatomical changes which take place during that six to eight week course of treatment. Our solution is called Automatic Anatomy Recognition, AAR. You can, think, you can best think of AAR as facial recognition for medical images. The technology recognizes and analyzes anatomical structures in the given body regions. We have three advantages over existing solutions. One, is the superior accuracy of our, approach, of our approach results in less manual editing by the physician. Number two, we contour all of the relevant structures in the, in, in the therapeutic area, not just the major ones. And the third is we have demonstrated applications of our technology on multiple canceled cancer types. Imaging accounts for approximately 18 I'm sorry, imaging accounts for approximately 8 billion of the healthcare costs normally associated um, with cancer care. And those costs are targeted on five specific cancer types, breast, lung, colorectal, head and neck and prostate. QRS participates in the $1 billion market for automated analysis of imaging and cancer care, driven by the use of imaging in the planning of treatment and the assessment of res treatment response. Over 1 million cancer patients are treated annually with radiation therapy. And our initial target market for automated tissue contouring is $200 million annually. We will enter the market by focusing on the 32 US-based healthcare systems that offer proton therapy, an advanced form of radiation treatment that requires the utmost precision in treatment planning. AAR's increased accuracy and productivity 
will help those centers plan during, replan during the course of treatment to account for changes in the patient anatomy. The next target market will be the healthcare systems where productivity improvements of AAR will help compensate for a shortage of dosimetrists. We plan a price of $200 per plan and anticipate annual customer revenue ranging from $15,000 to over $100,000. QRS has already raised $3 million to support its product development, clinical evaluation, and FDA submission. We have developed AAR as a SaaS-based product using Amazon Web Services. The product is currently undergoing clinical evaluation at four academic medical centers. We are currently raising 1.8 million to progress from a product development company to an operations company that generates revenue from customer sales. Most of those funds will be used for business development and customer service and 400,000 are earmarked uh, to further integrate the workflow, uh, further integrate AAR into the clinical workflow. Thank you for your attention. RTM Vital Sign. Hi, I'm Nancy DiGiani, co-founder and CEO of RTM Vital Signs. I'm a Philly native and a chemical and biochemical engineer from Villanova, Virginia, Penn and Morton. I've spent most of my career in the materials industries and have had the tough duty of living in Paris for over three years while running several global business units. I've also had the opportunity to start, develop, turn around and grow businesses and have bought and sold businesses globally. I started RTM with two friends to address the critical unmet need in cardiac and respiratory health care, which is continuous real-time monitoring of vital health signs that can predict and prevent adverse health events such as heart attacks and respiratory distress. This type of telemedicine is changing health care from reactive to preventive, and we're excited to be part of it. I'm Nancy DiGiani, co-founder and CEO of RTM Vital Signs. RTM is a medical device company focused on developing real-time continuous monitoring of vital signs for two of the greatest needs in healthcare, cardiac and respiratory health. We have two separate devices, a wearable respiratory monitor and a miniature implantable cardiac monitor. Both devices have diagnostic algorithms and both will send alerts and alarms to a patient's cell phone, a physician, or to a central monitoring station if any abnormal trend is detected. A respiratory device has many medical and non-medical uses. The human trials, which are ready to begin, are funded by an NIH grant. Our implantable cardiac monitor for high-risk cardiac patients has gained a lot of interest among cardiologists and several have invested in RTM. We've completed almost a year of in vivo trials in canines. And importantly, we are building strong IP positions for both devices with five patents already issued. RTM is currently raising $3 million, which will be used to complete another round of long-term animal studies for the cardiac device and human trials for our respiratory device, as well as algorithm and app development. In prior round funding, we raised over $2 million and we continue to seek non-dilutive grants. We are targeting commercialization of our first respiratory device application for fitness tracking in late 2021, early 22, and expect the device to be profitable in its first year of sales. About 1,000 people a day die from sudden death in the U.S. from adverse cardiac events most of which result from hypertension, and many of which are preventable. According to the American Heart Association, only about 25% of the over 100 million people taking blood pressure medication are effectively controlled. Implantable cardiac devices are not new. It's already a $43 billion market with well over a million devices, mostly pacemakers, implanted each year. But none of these devices can monitor blood pressure. Real-time continuous monitoring of vital cardiac signs is common in hospitals. Many of you have probably seen this type of display in use for patients who are stationary and hooked up to wires and tubes. RTM's device will be able to monitor these same vital signs continuously in ambulatory patients 
both inside and outside of the hospital. And by the way, these hospital monitors are already a $5 billion market. We've had several devices implanted in canines for almost a year. The dogs are doing just fine, and the entire blood pressure waveform measured by our devices perfectly matches with the reference catheter system routinely used in hospital ICUs and ORs. Simply put, the RTM device accurately measures the entire blood pressure waveform. The RTM wearable respiratory monitor has many uses, including several very large medical, military, and industrial applications, as well as fitness and training applications for athletes and the general public. As an aside, the wearable's medical market is projected to grow to over $75 billion in five years, driven by telemedicine, which has gained wide acceptance during the current pandemic. This is a schematic of our device, and the picture shows a mock-up of our device which adheres to the sternal notch. Our key differentiator is our ability to determine tidal volume, which today cannot be done outside of a hospital setting or without a mask and big stationary hardware. Although there are chest straps and other wearable devices which can measure respiratory rate, none also measure tidal volume, and both are needed to track respiratory function. This slide shows just some of the key medical applications of our device. Again, the RTM device can be used both in and out of the hospital and can alert the wearer or physician of any adverse trends in respiratory function. The FDA has designated the RTM respiratory monitor as a breakthrough device and will fast track it through the approval process. Our core team is an experienced one with proven entrepreneurial and intrapreneurial track records. Our collaborators are experts in implanted medical devices, signal processing, acoustics, data management, and applications development. Thank you for your time and your interest in RTM. We'd be pleased to provide additional information or spend time with you discussing our progress to date and future milestones. Thank you, Dave and EY. Those were some incredible pitches. It is going to be tough to pick our Lion's Den finalist for September 24th. Please stay tuned for our next healthcare featured company presentations on September 1st. And it is now time to head to our packed remote room where you can join a table with one of our sponsors or one of the featured companies that just pitched. The link can be found in your email invite or on your desktop or mobile Capital Conference app. Thank you.